And of course, a helicopter flies right over my house, right when I start recording. Then a couple of videos ago where I talked about this, like no matter what, aircraft will find me. It's been quiet all morning. I just started recording and a helicopter flies over, like really low. Anyways, a couple nights ago was pretty amazing. For the first time for millions of people, they were able to witness the Northern Lights from the comfort of their own backyards. Like for me, I haven't seen Northern Lights since I left Michigan years ago. And it's the first time that I got to watch them from Northern California. And I forgot how beautiful they were. Now, I got out kind of late. I actually didn't know. I heard something about it. I had a long day at work on Friday and I took a nap and I'd heard something about Northern Lights might be visible. And when I woke up later in the evening, I was checking my local Facebook group for, for my local photographers Facebook, uh, my local photographers Facebook group, and people were starting to post pictures. And I was like, oh, snap. I grabbed my gear, didn't even check my battery power, which was kind of unfortunate because I had like 50% on my battery, which it still held out. And I ran out and I just found the first dark spot that I could and started shooting. And I captured this little time lapse, which I'm really proud of. But the most amazing part about that night wasn't realized until yesterday when meteorologist Matt Rudkin, I hope I got your name right, I'm terrible with names, he posted this. My favorite part about social media last night, no bickering, no fighting, no politics, no conspiracies, no arguments. Everybody was on the same team, having an awesome time experiencing the Northern Lights as one big community. Man, we need more of this. And I agree 100%. We saw this not too long ago with the eclipse. It's just really amazing for once to see people just get behind one thing. And that one thing is a camera. So I truly believe that's why photography is important. Even though you have people running around saying photography is dead, I don't think photography is dead. I think photography is very much alive and is still very important. Now, what a lot of people are asking me about in my personal circle of friends is, when's the next one gonna happen? Now, there was uh, some speculation that was gonna happen last night and it, it didn't, at least not here. And so people are speculating, will it happen again on Sunday night, tonight? How do we know? So I'm gonna show you how I've been tracking the Aurora Borealis for the past, I don't know, day and a half. One solution that's available to anybody with an internet connection and web browser is the NOAA website. They do have an Aurora forecast. Now, this is pretty useful. A lot of people make some pretty good use out of it. But if you have an iPhone like me, there's a really, really handy app that is free. I'm going to show you right now. So what you can do is go to the App Store and look for the app called My Aurora Forecasts and Alerts. At the time of shooting this video, this app was completely free. So here it is right here. You see I have it installed. Let's take a look. When you first open the app, at the very top is a section that lists the KP index. Now the KP index value that you see on my screen probably won't match what you're seeing on yours. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, but it's based on location. The KP index is an integer with a range from zero to nine. Now, low values below two basically means the aurora is going to be very far north and not really visible to anyone who's not practically living in the Arctic regions. However, the higher that number gets, it indicates that the aurora is going to move further from the poles and become more active, hence more colors and a better light show. So if we click on aurora map, and granted, uh, your results are going to be different than what I'm seeing right now going to give you the location and it's going to give you a overlay of activity. So right now, it seems to be pretty active. What's that? Uh, Northern Russia? Up by the Kara Sea. So that's where it's active right now. I'm going to hit back. And if I hit best locations right now, it will give you some pins on a map showing the best locations to see the aurora. So 
Clearly, there's none where I live here in Northern California. So this has been very useful to determine if it's worthwhile going out. Now, last night, it wasn't. Um, hoping to get lucky tonight. So if I do get lucky, I'll post another time lapse, hopefully a better time lapse. But anyways, I uh, hope this information was useful. And I hope you all got some great pictures. And granted, not everyone got to see it. And for that, I'm truly sorry. It It's a worthwhile event. Uh, for what's worth, I know people live up in Alaska. They tell me they get to see it all the time. So if you haven't put Alaska on your bucket list and you appreciate night lights, that's probably something to consider. Anyways, um, that's all I have for this video. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you again next time.